All right. We are on. Hello, uh, everybody, and uh, welcome to the second playtest of the Happy Hammers. Um, I forgot to check and make sure you're all in Roll20, but it looks from where I'm sitting like you all are. So we are set. Uh, Corey and I are joined by our, by our wonderful crew of playtesters, Adam Young, Adam uh, Adam Young, Adam Patterson, and uh, Nicholas Trahan, uh, also known as Elstragoon. Uh, on Twitch. I'm very sorry for using your last names. I realized as I was giving the introductions that may be overstepping my bounds. Um, won't have it again, but there it is. My yeah, name is Taylor. I just got to move again. Yeah. <laughs> my yeah. My, just in fairness, my name's Taylor Lanham. Hi, you can look me up. Yeah, I mean, as someone who's been on the run from feds for the past two years on multiple charges of arson and conspiracy to commit public nudity, this is bad. <laughs> this is this is not great. Um, I turned him in for the nudity, and all of his his members are after me. <laughs> all of the members. Wah, wah. Sad trombone music. All right, cool, cool. Well, um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, wishing you all, wishing you all luck on your future um, uh, runaway escape plots but for the next two hours um we are diving into uh, the escapism of eba um so we have a how, runaway escape plot in the game right now don't we i, I was oh, yeah. gonna say how how much of our last session do you remember this was two weeks ago uh so i know it's uh relatively fresh what um what do you guys remember from last session me 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 we were ambushed by nature itself yeah. um like, I, th I think we, there was a, uh, what's the name of the tree people? Uh, the Glade Folk. Or the, uh, the, the race that is, like, made of, like, wood. Oh, Ember Fights. Ember Fights, fights yeah. yeah. Um, that makes it sound like they should be on fire, which is grim if you're a tree. Um, <laughs> we, had a, we had a Snow White Ember Fight in a barrel that we decided to rebarrel. Um, after he was like, please let me out. I don't know if Ember fights have genders, but, um, shows my biases. Um, anyway, um, and then time we to, were, time like, to re examine we're, yourself. Yeah, um, I, I, sh I should check many things right now. Um, but um, uh, and then we were attacked by by the trees themselves, or it looks like nature the was closing it closed up. in. Yeah, we were yeah. going to go through a path and it closed up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Um, so let's let's back up just a little bit here. So you guys started off in the city of Orid, um, a city that is a uh, basically one of the three main like metropolises of uh, Eba. Um, you were, uh, contracted out by, uh, some kind of a businessman. Uh, he doesn't seem like a particularly legitimate businessman, although I guess in his defense, the idea of what is a legitimate business is probably kind of a tentative thing, uh, in Eva. But, um, a guy named Blazzo, uh, who, uh, reached out to you with a mission, right? Uh, does anybody remember what the actual mission is? You're supposed to be getting his papers, right? Yeah. His, not his. The, the oh, other yeah. guy, he had like, yeah. The guy who was in the barrel. Yeah. <laughs> he had like a uh, yeah. questionably enough. willing scientist guy who may or may not actually want to work for him. And he said that the scientist needed his notes. But I think we've all been suspecting that he probably doesn't actually want to work there at all anyway. Uh, and then... And uh, and in fact, but he stowed you, away on our thing. Right. And in fact, you explicitly found out that he very much did not. Uh, Blotso right. definitely, yeah. definitely portrayed this as like, yeah, he recently came under our employ. We need you to go get his research notes. Um, and he's offering you a pretty remarkable deal for it. It's a hefty payout, a thousand petty coin, uh, not to mention uh, paid provisions uh, for your travel. Uh, and positive referrals, which means a bump in your caravan star rating, which means that moving forward after this contract, you would start to get kind of a, a bigger deals, bigger opportunities. Um, basically everything that a young burgeoning uh, caravan of vault peddlers could ask for. Um, as you left the city of Orid. Let me actually take you to, yeah, this map here. Um, you entered into 
the realm of the Glade Folk. And it wasn't very shortly after you got there that things started going awry. Uh, Viaro, after a brief interaction with your blacksmith, who is in the process right now of improving your armor. Um, Let me clarify on that. Yeah, I couldn't remember if I had that or not. You did, yeah. So the deal is that um, you don't have any armor until you get to the research facility, but when you do, it's going to be two nodes stronger. Is it two nodes stronger? I thought it was also like custom fit, so it reduced the movement penalty. Uh, I could be wrong about that. I, I believe that might be true. Um, I'll go back and I will double check my check notes. Check the mods. On yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is just yeah. Free advice for everybody. <laughs> Bully your GM. Bully your GM <laughs> for more whenever you get the chance. Um, I didn't know. I actually only thought it was one node better, but I could be wrong about that. Oh, was it one node better, and then also it improved the movement by one node? Because yeah, it has a well, it has a movement penalty. I thought it was going to remove. That's right. You were trying to get rid of the movement yeah, penalty. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Okay, gotcha. Um, well, sure. We'll we'll litigate that moving forward. But if, if the point is, oh, Corey. Uh, so, uh, actually, you keep talking just right before we start. Let me know. Okay, cool. Uh, well, actually, no. Then you should go because I'm trying to seamlessly. I'm trying to seamlessly weave this narrative into into ah, where we are and what we're doing. Let me state my role as official rules lawyer, um, because that is why I am separate and in this corner over here. Uh, that being Get said, in your corner! Any... Yeah. <laughs> if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. If chat has questions, I'm fielding chat right now. I will answer them to the best of my ability. I'm also taking notes. Uh, Taylor, real quick. Yeah. Uh, do you have their dice pool to throw up on the... Uh, on the map that roll. we land on? Yes, it is there. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, just something to bear in mind. If you guys go to the side, uh, you will see the rule set that Taylor so diligently put in. Something that is going to be important for you on this one is combat actions. And in the 1E document, you'll find the combat section. Uh, I also did a quick rules, which has some combat. Um... Oh, there, there's actually my combat quick sheet is above that, which will give you the lowdown on how that works. Uh, quick thing to remember, combat is squad-based, meaning that you guys have a turn in which you can do things interstitially between each other, and uh, it is goal-oriented, meaning that there is an overall goal for each combat you enter, um, which if you don't succeed on, you know, things happen. Are you, so, why are you talking about combat so much? Why Reason? indeed? Let's actually talk about that. <laughs> um, so, uh... You set out on this journey, you entered into the realm of the Glade Folk, and it was not very shortly after um, that something weird happened. Um, you made your way uh, through the trees, and one of the provision barrels that Blotso's people had so generously uh, offered for all of you fell off of the back of your caravan. And as it did, um, Nectar, you pursued um, to grab it, only to find that it contained the very alive and very relieved to be finally free, Aspen Arasia, the doctor uh, whose notes you are out to go get. He informed you that, in fact, he was not working for Blotso. He had, in fact, been kidnapped uh, and offered you a secondary deal. Turn your back on Blotso take him back to his facility and he will supply you with as much petty coin as he can offer at the time and in addition more lucrative jobs working with some of his more academic friends as of right now the group met in the woods and tried to piece together different options one of which was to have your cake and eat it too an option which i Highly recommend you all continue co uh, considering after right. you we deal were planning with your... on What's up? We were planning on taking him back, getting his notes, and bringing him back, and then playing like we had never seen the guy, right? Playing like you'd never seen the guy, and also having him doctor fake notes that would lead to Blotso basically 
getting what he wanted out of your contract, but that mm-hmm. ultimately would not serve him in the long run, but that he wouldn't right. know they were fake. Right. Um, it was at this point, as you were making your decisions, um, that Arasia pointed out something of an issue. You could no longer see your caravan through the mire and trees and foliage of the Eva forest. And it's here that we find ourselves. The trees around you seem ominous, looming, but not moving as of this moment. You have a brief period. I won't tell you how long before shit really kicks off. What's your action? Well, I just want to first say I really appreciate that you made Hank's token on all capital letters. Um, but I, I, I think just this is a he, he's, he's, he's a simple man with simple prerogatives. Hank would probably be just ready to intersperse himself between any threat and the caravan. Is that the caravan physically or do you mean other members of the caravan? Probably the, the latter. OK, gotcha. So you're thinking you want to move Hank up to where Viaro is? Yeah, just looking at the, uh... I think so, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, Viaro, if you don't have any opposition to that, Hank can move up to the front. Um, yeah, I think I'd be feeling a bit self-preservative anyways and be looking to, like, action roll through, through some somewhere to here towards the caravan. Okay, cool, cool. Then we are going to move you here. We're going to move Hank up here. And as the two of you are kind of changing positions, you can see the branches of this boy here on the end. This long-fingered branch reach out kind of around your side, Nectar, reaching for Arasia, reaching for the scientist, the barrel containing the scientist. And as it because does, trees... There, didn't oh, yeah? <laughs> are these trees like oh, yeah. other ember fights, or are they, they just look like trees, like animated trees? They look like animated trees. Um, tell you what, why don't you actually roll something for me here? Um, let's have you roll memory and holistics for me. And this is going to be, this will be an easy one. So TDV of seven that you're shooting for. I'm realizing I don't have my physical player sheet. It can't be far. Also, I think Ah, I do have my physical sheet. Okay. I don't know if memory is still a still in a built skill I oh shit is it not okay. I think Corey is saying something but he is he is silent himself. I think you're right actually okay yeah, yeah memory, tell you what like, do a de- we'll do deduction if that's the case let's do deduction and um, holistics deduction and holistics okay I have plus one to insight also is that something that yeah I think that would absolutely relevant for me work. Uh, let's see and how do I roll on this again roll how do I roll in roll 20? Um, uh, you can use R the text then... box to do it. Um, yeah. My personal preference is over on the left side. There's a toolbar. Um, oh. oh. That didn't work, but I'm going to do this. Ha ha. Yes. yes. There you go. It's much easier. Though. Oh, hey. So exploding. Plus... You got an exploding. Yes. Roll oh, it again. Oh, you're right. Roll it All again. All day. All right. So that's an 11 plus 4 plus 5. So 16. Fuck. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Um, so, thing now. Oh, yeah. You, right. Did you roll? Oh, plus. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> this is actually yeah, your the... cousin. You've rolled so well. Um, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I just got this tree's phone number. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, so, with that roll, you have maybe not interacted with a lot of the glade folk but you know that there are a couple of things that are are kind of widely known about them one of which is that they are not prone to overgrowth the way that the rest of the 
tribes are. Um, and the second is that they seem to not really carry a lot of the features that are commonly associated with other ember fights, right? Other ember fights are much more human in nature than they are tree. These guys are like typically faceless, or if they do have faces, they are much more naturally woven into the nooks and grooves that you would find on an actual tree. Um, so yeah, so these are there's... likely ember fights. Then they're like actual ember fights that just don't look as human. They're probably trees. Right. That that would be that would be the general takeaway. That is that is my deduction. Yeah. Um. um right. Well. And as this branch is reaching over, um, you can hear Arasia still in the barrel, um, like moving his eye and mouth to kind of see and speak, and he says, "Can." Can you do something about that? <laughs> That's right, because he's still forced inside the barrel. Yeah, you wouldn't let um, him leave, so he's just in a barrel. Yeah, now. I think that's good. His added protection at this point. <laughs> think about how grabbable he would be as a tree. Um, well, I, I feel like I should angrily swat the reaching hand away. Uh, okay. But uh, I don't know what I have for weapons. Oh, I do know what I have for weapons. What do yeah, I have? you would have bought those last session. I got a bone knife, baby. Bone knife. I think it's time. I think it's time to see how it works. So I'm gonna try to map this uh, this bit off. That's reaching for our um, the doctor here. Absolutely. Let's have you make a brutality roll, and it sounds like you're making a much more calculated cut, right? You're not just trying to murder this guy. You're trying to take no, out the appendage just going that's for the coming arm. towards you. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, so then roll either clockwork or uh, I can also do adaptation for something like this. Right, okay. Well, as per last time, I gave myself like a flat ride across the entire po- approach spectrum, so it's like plus four no matter what I do. Oh, that's um, right. Okay, yeah. So uh, so I'm just doing brutality, which is d6. Um, okay. Again. Well, blam! The opposite of the Ooh, spectrum. Oh, no. Well, so the good news is we plus... don't have a critical failure mechanic, so that's right. something. What's the It's modifier? still plus four, so it's a five. Okay, so here's a five. Give me one sec here. Because I believe that actually... Okay, there we go. Sorry. Um... Oh, that will clear the movement. It does not clear the armor. Um, All right. So their armor is going to ablate by one. Um, as you sink your knife into kind of the, the meaty husk uh, of this branch. And as you do, uh, these others start to get more aggressive. They are going to make movements down this way and we are now in combat uh so the first thing that i need everyone to do uh is to go ahead and oh that's what i was doing there we go um let's go ahead and let's have you all uh roll for one second here Oh, well, first things first, actually. We don't roll yet. Uh, Let's talk about your objective, your intent uh, for this conflict, right? And uh, just to follow along here, this is the rule set for combat. Um, So we're beginning with the intent phase. The party declares your intent or goal for the encounter, and the GM gives the party a hard-encoded objective. Um, So... Uh, what's your goal for this objective? Are you trying to wipe these guys out? Are you just trying to get the hell out of here? What's your goal? So I can speak to Hank's goal. We'll see if it's the greater goal. Hank is probably leaning towards terrifying them enough. They decide we're not a good target. They just kind of skedaddle. Okay. It seems pretty reasonable because there's just like a bazillion trees in here. So like killing them all is probably like eight weeks worth of tree beatings. So like 
It should be a little more tactical, I guess, than just like defeating all the the trees that are right there. But we do have to get through here. So I guess it's like maybe we got to reunite with the caravan and then we need to like make progress, which might be more like an escape run type situation at this point. Which was uh -huh. not, but you also bring up the, the good point. There's like 800 million trees in here. Like odds of escape are pretty minimal, right? At least easy escape. So the idea right. of posing enough of a threat to make our escape slow but easy seems good. Right. Kind of like surrounding the, the the caravan with torches kind of deal. Like we just love, we're good. We're not hitting anybody. We're just trying to get out of here. Right. Right. That's cool. Did I, when I rolled the other like uh, roll about like finding out about these guys, like, are they like, they kind of like came up on us while we were talking. Are they like slow or were they just like being sneaky? They were being sneaky. Um, okay. You, you don't know exactly how fast they are. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I so like the, I like the, the torchy plan to just sort of like put the ember in the ember fight. You know what I'm saying? All right, yeah. So it's it sounds like the general goal here um, is not necessarily to burn the whole forest down, but it's basically to create enough of a stir that these people are going to leave you alone, right? Right. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to telegraph my, uh, my objective by saying that although you sunk your bone knife into that one's arm, it is still reaching for that barrel. Um, mm. You get the impression that their objective has to do with Arasia himself. Um, Interesting. Now is, he, have, is he this kind of ember fight? Uh, he is not a glade folk, no. Um, but uh, let me see here. Okay, so combat now follows three phases. So declaration, players and archivists describe their actions and make their roles after roles are completed. Uh, or after the declarations are completed, the lower movement nodes go second. That is weird wording on that doc. I'm, I apologize. Sure is. Yeah, that is very yeah, odd. I don't know why that, I don't know why that says that. Um, so first things first, uh, what's everybody's movement nodes? <clears throat> Decent, uh, six, because I don't have my movement penalty from the armor. Okay. Yeah, Hank's movement is six as well. Okay. I got a nine. Okay, so you guys are absolutely going to be going first, if that's the case, because you do have a higher movement than any of these guys. Um, so let's go ahead and have you all... Uh, there are no turns necessarily. It's more of a faction turn kind of thing. So the three of you are gonna go, and then I'm gonna go for all of my NPCs. So you guys tell me this round, what is your plan? What's what's the action you guys wanna take? Um, so how does um, contested movement work? However you wanna... <clears throat> Uh, Any time that you have um, somebody on an a, a sorry an enemy combatant on an adjacent hex, your movement count is considered halved. Considered halved. Okay. Now, does that Maybe. stack, Corey? Um, for example, no, Viaro does, has two ember fights. It does not stack. Okay. And how does our movement um, like translate into this hex grid? Is it's not one to one, is it? It is. Uh, yeah, is. Taylor's gonna have to answer that. I didn't make the this this. I believe it's one to one. Uh, I believe okay. it's one to one. That that was the idea. So okay. that's like nine hex grids is how far we can go. That is yeah, the idea. You have a nine. Yeah. I'm wow. moving. Yep. Ooh. It does. Okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Corey. It does cost something for them to move, right? As far as action points go. Uh, you get your movement, and then you have four action points to spend. Oh, you in addition to double, movement. Yeah, you can Ooh. do double your movement for the cost of action points. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm so, first because I have a nine. Is that... that you is guys are in squad-based skirmish combat, so you guys can move interstitially among yourselves. 
but your faction goes first. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, you can move, Adam can act, and then Adam can move. You can feel free Got to it. Mm -hmm. it. Um, and then, do I need a token for um, Daisy? Uh, Is she on this map somewhere? Oh, I did not even think about Daisy. Uh, give me a minute, and I will have one for Daisy. Uh, well, do you guys think we should try to make, like, a formation that we can then sort of, like, ease ourselves out? Or should we try to, like, grab the Aspen guy and, like, make a break for it? I mean, both, uh, right? Because, you know, make a break with Aspen because Hank can carry him easily because of the barrel and Hank is huge. Right. Um, yeah. While, while we kind of protect it, I was thinking of holding, you know... You know, on the on the grenade from the chemist, you know, like I'm ready to blow it up if you guys make offensive actions. Okay, we gotta we gotta also salvage our entire caravan, right? The idea is to get Aspen back to the caravan, right? Oh, okay. Is that good enough, or is our caravan is also like in the woods though, right? Like, cause we just been on the main map, aren't we? Like, just barely into the woods. There are at least more people at the caravan. You you have just gone into the woods. I would say that we'll we'll say for argument's sake you're maybe an hour into them. I mean they're big woods, they take time to get through, but you're probably okay. about an hour in. You're not like right at the edge of the woods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would imagine what Hank would probably do, considering just Hank is massive and and we have one dude in a barrel who needs to get out as well. Hank would probably take um the our scientist friend um, under one arm, barrel style, uh, and let me pull up uh, combat actions here. Yeah, probably take Aspen under arm, and then Hank would charge forward with Lucille and basically try to like batter his way through, or almost like wedge between um, one of the trees, with the intention of basically like ramp, kind of like physically like pummeling through them, and maybe doing the equivalent of like what's basically an intimidate check on these fellows as in like basically a show of strength that basically suggests like enough to push through them but also like to like show like what we're made of absolutely okay cool um so what we're gonna have you do then um i'm gonna use the taunt action for your uh, intimidate uh okay. this will be ferocity parlay okay yeah um excellent so ferocity parlay um let me and i'm gonna set the tdv wall. here at let's say 10. um before you roll before any of you roll i just want to remind everybody you do have caravan resources that you can mm -hmm. use they are represented by this little dish uh down here at the bottom of the map so and do remember anytime you act in accordance to your caravan's principles you generate those so Okay. I mean, this is brutal support. Um <laughs> if we're being honest. Like Okay, fair. Yeah. He didn't even just make a basic attack action. <laughs> yeah, I mean H Hank is Hank is, is is supporting the team in the most in the most overtly violent way possible. Okay. Um, let me roll that's so in Hank's case that's a one D four plus eight. I mean he said the DC is a ten. Uh DC is yeah, ten. So you gotta you gotta get a two, unless you Do want it. to add dice to it. Yeah, that's an eleven. Okay, hey. sick. Uh, so the overall effect that that is gonna have then, Hank, mm -hmm. is this guy moves back, and so does this one, and a path is now cleared um, amongst these trees. Now you were saying that you're gonna take. Uh, the barrel containing Arasia under your arm and just make your way back to the caravan? Yeah, it visualized this. Hank has has, has Arasia under under one arm um, and, and, and Lucille, the giant steel pipe, raised on high, howling as he charges forward. All right, perfect. Uh, so what I'm going to have you do then, um, let's have you make... It's so hard not to just choose ferocity for everything you do, Hank. Um, uh, but I think what I'm going to have you do 
This is you adapting, I think, as much as Hank adapts to things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be an adaptation, and we're going to say it's a hardiness roll to like pick this guy up and to maintain your composure as you're carrying this barrel full of full of tree right back to the caravan. Um, I'm yeah. going to set this one. Hank is a pretty strong dude, so I'm going to set this one also at a 10. Okay. The, the, the small catch there is, while Hank's hardiness is very high, Hank's adaptation is literally zero. Um, well, it should be a because... one if that's the case. Yeah. Oh, I think I, there was a feat that gave minus one to adaptation. Oh, shit, that's right. Um, yeah. So Hank is, Hank is fittingly <laughs> enough, not very adaptable. Um, so I'm going to politely request a uh, to, to use one of these stronger die. Yeah, use them, use them up. Now's the time. Y'all are yeah, talented yeah. at generating them, so yeah, go for it. Yeah, I think it's probably a D10 in this case. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. And uh, I also just, just, just for context here, um, you know, to, to add to the visual, um, Hank uh, managed to get a hold of some old like records from the before time um, that he's listened to extensively. They unfortunately belong to someone who's really into like '80s hair metal. So during times of like boisterousness and 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 tension and maybe even overt violence, he screams like Twisted Sister lyrics, um, for, irrespective of like context or like I don't know, like Poison or Winger or shit. Um, and uh, it's not even contextually appropriate, but he's screaming, we're not going to take it. Um, and I'm going to roll this. Um, okay. Cool. So this is a this is a roll 1d8 and then a 1d10. You're going to add these together. 1d8. Oh, my. Oh, oh. oh. I just see it. Thanks. I think I think he is going to take it. Oh, wow. God. <laughs> we apparently are going to take it. We yeah. apparently are going to. How? Statistically. How? Hank. It's four odds. Hank, you, you like, uh, at these trees and they like back up to make room for you and you reach back and as you do, you kind of like look over your shoulder at Nectar like, I got this. And you take the barrel over your head and you're like, oh, uh, oh shit. And it like goes uh, down this hill and the barrel containing Aspen Arasia washes into the stream and starts washing down. Uh, it's going to start moving down this way as it mm. goes down. Um, okay, that is Hank's turn. <laughs> What's that everybody? is Hank's turn. <laughs> Actually, a pretty good turn, though. Oh, we could just get him at the bridge. Okay. Uh, are these... Are these does it look like these ember fights are going for him? Are they like completely running away from us now that he's like not even here or are they? Um, no, no, they're not running away. They, they, he was intimidating them out of those spaces, um, but they're not running away. They're still very I mean, much. Are they, are they following? Cause like what they wanted from us before was him. So are they going to the, are they like making a move towards this river to go retrieve him? Or are they still interested in us? I'm not going to tell you what they're doing yet. Cause it's not their turn. All of the, Let's all of your guys' turns be. is happening at once, <laughs> right? I so, see how it's going to be. Yeah, so right. Elstragoon goes, and uh, Adam Young goes, and then I will tell you what all of these Ember fights do. I, I also do want to just make it clear for our two remaining uh, hammers, you can't go after Aspen, because Aspen winds up in the creek after your turn is over. Gotcha. This is, so this is a this is a move that happens simultaneously, exactly. basically. Okay. Uh, well, at that moment, not knowing how it would have went, uh, I guess I would have probably just tried to push this one guy with the bone knife away. Like, just tried to make space. So I'm looking at these two. How do I how do I tap on this board like you did? That was so fancy. Oh, um, just um, hold down the mouse. Yeah. I was just gonna push on these two guys um, out okay. of the way. You know, behind Hank, just to give him more space. Okay, cool. Um, and then I don't know if I can like call Daisy over or what. If she can hear me from there, I just feel like if I'm gonna go rumble. It, it would be good to be mounted or something. Uh, yeah, um, tight. Uh, okay, so let's, so let's you, see. Let, let's have you do a couple of things here. So, uh, you're trying to shove them like out of the way, right? 
yeah, like a trip, I guess, even maybe, I guess is some similarly like conceptually similar or a charge, I, I guess charge. would be. I think yeah. charge makes sense. Well, that's um, a lot of points. That's the only thing I can do, right? Because I get four points. Well, speaking is a free action. But I'm, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So yeah, like so a you whistle could, you could and... do the charge and then still call Daisy over. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's do that thing. Oh, it okay. requires two free hex spaces between me and the thing I was going to charge. So I can't do that. Uh, you would have to back up, which I'll let you do. You have your movement also. I have free. enough movement. Okay. So I take a couple steps back and then get a running start and charge forward. That makes sense. Yeah, give me that um, ferocity. Although, roll. is that is that better than this tackle where I'm just trying to like grab them and push them? I guess. So it I guess we'll go. We'll go trying, with the first one. It depends on what you're trying to do. Um, if you're if you're trying to actually restrain to one of them, like be on top of them, tackle. Um, if you're trying to make space, then charge is probably the way to go. I'm trying to push them. Charge looks like Charge says I can move through an occupied space without getting attacked. Hmm. One of these, and so does, um, yeah. Um. Well, tell you what, if, we're, it, if your goal is to push them, these are just pre-made ones that we made. Okay. But we explicitly say you can just come up with other stuff. Okay, um, yeah. I'm just trying to like I'm just trying to like push him away and like create a perimeter around Hank. Okay, cool. Let's have you do clockwork hardiness. Okay. Cool, cool. That and you're is trying to push two be... of them, right? Yep. Ooh, okay. explode. It's gonna be an eleven. Five. Oh boy. Uh clockwork hardiness, that is a nine. Uh, okay, gotcha. So what I'm gonna give you then is you do push this one closest to you away. Okay. Unfortunately, you don't roll quite large enough uh, to get both of them out. But you are effectively making space as a party and freeing up some room for Viaro. Viaro, you're the last step in this faction turn. What are you going to do? Um, if I'm reading this right, there are reactions, so you don't necessarily have to spend all four of your action points. Correct. You can save some action points for reactions. All right. Um, let stick with the original plan. So my my still have. I'm gonna use my movement to move over here. While holding the grenade out as if I'm ready to pull the pin, like. Um, Orange spike in hand, like thumb in the pin, like spike going. I get to Aspen. And um, I guess that would be an intimidate kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Let's have you do a, a, a ferocity parlay roll. Um, I I've said it. Parlay, which is cool. But ferocity's only a two. Yeah, remember you do have those caravan dice if you prefer. Yeah. Will support? <laughs> how, how easy can we generate these dice? <laughs> I think it's fine. Just go ahead and use them up. Yeah, no. I don't. I don't want to end this game of Final Fantasy with thirty Phoenix Downs in my inventory. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, he knows what's up. <laughs> oh, somebody's <laughs> played a Final Fantasy game before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll roll a D8 and a D6. We'll use the D6 from the dice pool. Four, oh god, five. Well, Especially the way seven. we've been rolling. Why are there so uh, many ones seven. on our dice? Uh, that does leave me with two points remaining. Okay, wait, so you got a seven on that? Yeah. Um, okay, uh, so what I was going to say is that I had previously set it at ten. Hank has already done a good job of opening these guys up for you, so seven actually is going to work. Um, this guy is going to go back with that. Um, oh, well, then I would get a full movement. I could get even closer to Aspen. Correct. The idea was, like, I was approaching him to uh, defend him with the grenade anyways. When he, when Hank and Hank lost him down the, the hill, I'd be following him immediately. Yeah. Well, remember, this is happening as... It's, it's all so happening like, at the same time. It makes time. sense that I'd be going that way? I don't know. 
I'm, I'm not I'm not here to metagame police you, but like uh but no, what we can say is that you were making your way down to the creek regardless. Um, which puts you in a position to be right next to Aspen when he lands in the water. Um, so we'll put you right there at the water's edge. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now it is my turn. Uh, so I'm going to have these two guys go first. Um, they are going to make their way down to Aspen, uh, and they are going to do that as quick as they can. Making their way into the water. Um, as they do, uh, they are going to make a roll to pick him up. Now, we don't have anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and roll it. Oh, NPC rolls are different anyways. So I would just be rolling this. That is a seven. Um, and I'm actually going to say that doesn't work. Um, this barrel is in the water now, and they are sticking their tree arms into it, trying to get it as it bobs up and down beneath the uh, beneath the rolling current. Uh, and Aspen Arasia slips through their fingers onto the other side. Uh, for these three here, I'm going to have them make their move. Uh, and these two are going to move up this way and they're going to try and cut you off. This one is going to move up here to do the same thing. And they are going to each make attacks on Hank and Nectar. That's rude. Isn't it though? Yeah, yeah. they haven't swung at anybody. Don't think. Attack. Did anybody have a movement note of uh, a movement note of five? Uh, well, not a five. Or okay. all higher. Cool, cool. Then yeah, all of these attacks miss you. Um, it is kind of a ballet of tree limbs and like somersaults and backflips as you are uh, weaving your way around these things, but they are effectively blocking you off from getting closer to Viaro. If you want to try to get to them, you'll have to uh, you'll have to roll for it. Uh, all right, it is back to your faction's turn. What are you doing? I think I'm going to make a break for the the like downriver here. So now that these ember fights are this way and Aspen's already slipped through them, I kind of want to like head like this way and end up kind of over here to see if I can catch him. Okay. So I've got a pretty high movement. Um, I feel like I it's worth considering I... or at least asking, does the caravan have a will of its own or do we need to like consider it? Uh, well, Daisy currently is attached to the caravan. Um, okay. Yeah, Nectar can probably do something with that. Um, although Daisy is an overgrown ember fight, so you know. Yeah, is she fast? She, she, she can't be. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's not. fast. Uh, it's it's she's like fast. ask. It's like asking your senile grandfather to go pick something up at the CVS. You don't know what they're going to come back with, you know? Right. Uh, I see. Yeah. Well, this one usually comes back with a knife. St right. Strange, <laughs> strange insight there. That's that's funny. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to go. I want to. I'm going to run over and. Uh, I don't know that I need to. I don't know. I guess I feel like I'm going to get on Daisy and then try to. I don't know how much. Uh, I'm going to leap onto Daisy as I go. Okay. So, so I want to move up to Daisy and then leap on her and then ride her the rest of the way down. Because I think I can ride her right into the water and still be above the water myself. Absolutely. Um, let's have you roll adaptation and traversal to get to Daisy. Um, this is going to be... I'll set the DC, D, the TDV at... Um, we'll put it at like a nine. All right. Well, I only got a seven. It's a three on the D four plus. You are uh, welcome to use four for resources. adaptation. Just want to put that up there. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't. You know, I don't want to take a shot at us, but I did use that D six. It's in the pool. Oh. So the D six is gone. 
Um, no, can I use these there. caravan resources after I've already rolled? Because I already rolled. Typically, you want to call it beforehand, but I know everybody's okay. kind of getting the hang of it, so I'm being generous and just kind of reminding you as you go. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess knowing... I guess it's fair to say... I mean, like, you set it at what? The the TD? Uh, nine. Nine? Yeah, so I can't even make that anyway, so I would absolutely need a dice if this is ever going to work. And okay. this is just to get up to Daisy and get honor? Uh, correct, yeah, because you're trying to move through challenged spaces. Oh, okay. Um, because I don't... Okay, because I don't need to move... Oh, I feel like I have a path have of... Alex on you from the beginning has your movement like, next to this guy. So Oh, because I'm next to it. Okay, yeah. Okay, one, oh. two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. Well, I didn't get it. Uh, I could use... I could I could add a, a D4, but I might still not get it. So um, how, how close do I get? If you D8 don't add it... Still. Yeah. Uh, so if you don't add it, then you don't get through the challenge territory. So what that means is you would make it to about here. Uh, and then you could try and spend the rest of your movement going out and then over. I see. Like this. I, as, a, as a reminder, too, you guys are doing squad-based tactics. Right. So if you want to use your movement and then let someone else try to clear shit out, like, that's viable. Yeah, that's absolutely an option. I guess I just thought I had the movement to go around the backside this way, since all the ember fights were moving over this way. I could I could double back, and because I'm kind of heading well, so around behind them. The only issue they all that, just the only issue with that is if you were to move your uh, character this way, then you are also in challenge territory. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, but seeing a, uh, I think what you're after, right, is. That's, that's a square. I don't want yeah. Now, Hank, Corey brings up right. a good point. Hank could clear this out for you and make it easier to do. Well, Just simply by, like, kind of, like, elbowing my way through? Pretty much, yeah. Sure. I mean... Exactly. You, gonna, you did the beginning, right? You, you pushed yeah. back a couple of spaces that would open up. Yeah, I, I think I'll, Hank will do just that. Okay, so... Okay. Yeah, make a make a brutality ferocity roll for me. <laughs> Don't get a one, bitch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, Hank's not having a great day. Yeah, roll one d8 plus eight. Do not screw this up. I <laughs> okay, what's the damage on your uh, what's the damage on your weapon? I, I think it's a standard one d6 weapon. Oh, uh, no, it's static damage. Yeah, it should just be oh. a flat number for damage. Four, I think. Four, I believe four is correct. Four? Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, So with that, this guy now is knocked down, and I'm going to honor your goal to have him moved back. Um, uh -huh. Hank, let's have you do a second attack on this other guy. Excellent. Uh, for context, uh, Hank is screaming the chorus to Dream On by Aerosmith. This is happening. Love um, it. Really good chorus. Absolutely. Can it be at the end when he goes up an octave? Because that's what I like the best. Oh, it is. And, yeah, okay. and Hank's voice is usually like gravelly low. Like all whatever like <laughs> weird amounts of like human growth hormone his pituitary gland spits out. His like right. octave voice down like 15 octaves or whatever. He's hitting the falsetto perfectly. It's another <laughs> weird thing about Hank that does not make sense. Right. Um, that's cool. Uh, that's another uh, slash roll 1d8 plus 8. Okay. Yeah. Oh. It's still exploding. <laughs> roll roll it again. again. Roll it again roll for me. More. Next. Roll harder. Hank's just full of highs and lows today. Yeah. Does he add the plus 8 each time too? No, no. It, plus no, eight it, would, just be, it okay. would just be the plus 3. So that's a 19. Okay. Yeah. That tree okay. just exploded. Uh, yeah, Hank, I'm going to have that do double damage to the second Ember oh, fight. Tell me <laughs> how you uh, take this guy down. Like, what, is this, what does this look like as Hank is screaming the lyrics for Dream On? 
Um, yeah, Hank, currently not having anything under his arm anymore, power stances, um, like he's someone who plays strength builds and builds an Elden Ring, the, uh, that's a reference for the kids, um, <laughs> Lucille, um, and basically almost like, like, almost like swings, leans back and swings with a full arc into the center of the Ember fight, um, basically bringing down the entirety of his full physical mass, like he's almost like, you know, like those old timey, like, you know, test your strength things at the county fair? <laughs> Hank is doing that. Um, the tree, screaming. the tree lights up like all the way. <laughs> yeah, he's belting Steven Tyler's vocals. Um. <laughs> Sick. Um, okay, yeah. So I think two things happen with that. Um, Hank, you uh, lower your axe into this guy and take his place. And as you do, you kind of look up at this surviving one, and he mm -hmm. is also going to back up as a result nectar yeah. the the door is wide open for you now you don't even have to roll to get to daisy okay so i get to daisy and i do a leap onto her back which should be pretty easy because i do this all the time Absolutely. she's just sitting there yeah so let's have you but do i gotta adaptation use hardiness it's gonna be a five for the tv adaptation is do do do, do. Hardiness. Okay, well, my adaptation's plus four, so I can't. I can't fail. Jody. Bonk. But I super. Oh my god. Oh my, oh oh my, my god. god. Hell yeah. This is like the most amazing like <laughs> somersault, cartwheel, backflip, Olympic gold medal leap. You have Why, done she this. see you coming, and she's moving already. Wait, you have I done have an this even better so joke. many times. Do you know what? Do you know what happens when Ember fights? Do a jump like this. They always stick the landing. Oh my God. Ooh, Jesus Christ. Uh, well, it's a tree. this has been really a, fun. Everybody, joke. thanks for coming. We'll see you next week. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway. You, are, you are on top of Daisy and like. Go on, Daisy. All right. Daisy, Daisy's tongue is like wagging in the breeze. Like <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and the, 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 you actually have two action points left. What, what are you doing with them? Well, I want to use uh, Daisy and I are going to ride the rest of our movement over to the water here as much as I can. I think I have this is one, two, three, four. So I still have five, one, two, three, four, five, at least enough to get here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Daisy has any extra, but that's enough. And then if I can, I'll, I just I'm just trying to get into the water as much. So maybe I leap from here. Tell you what, I'll, I'll give you an extra. I'll give you an extra point of movement for Daisy. OK. Um, while you are on top. Um, okay, so I'm going to use my last two to leap into when I leap into the water to try to get maybe one further just from the edge. That's my last action point. So that's Sick. adaptation hardiness. Yeah, let's right? have you go again. Okay. How, how good uh, this is this from, jump? Right? Yeah, pretty normal. <laughs> it's a norm. It's okay. This one's normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two plus four, so it's just a six. Okay, uh, but cool. really, it's just for for whatever distance I can get. So it's not even like necessarily. <laughs> All right, sick. Uh, and Viaro, okay. it is your turn. What are you doing? Oh, not all that. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel okay. pretty confident with Nectar and Daisy with that kind of movement and leaping ability with the care of Aspen at this point. Um, did we decide on how the caravan works? I'm sorry. Mm. I think we decided, we decided they're they... just gonna sit there unless we do something with them. I guess. Well, well, you you established that narratively the caravan is literally just a cart, and I also made it clear first session the people in your employ on the caravan do not fight. They are not combat NPCs. Um, I know they move the cart. Ah, uh, you could try shouting at them too. Aren't aren't Hank and Daisy the only way it moves right now? They are typically the only way that it moves. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose yeah. three normal people could get oh, where shit. Hank or Daisy normally go and lift it, but yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, all right, Hank's on the way. I can't lift it. Those people in in the caravan don't like to lift heavy heavy duty things like this. All right. Well, I have a lot of things. Damn, it's Guess didgeridoo it's time. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> 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 Fucking shift in energy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
chopped and screwed intro to Closer by Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is oh, also Hank does not swear, however, in the songs he recites. He replaces the word fuck with cuddle. So if you're playing that song by Trent Reznor, he's talking about he wants to cuddle you like an animal. Okay, I like that. It's suddenly a song about gerbils. <laughs> Hi, Richard Gere. Anyway. <laughs> Man, this is I crap. have such a limit. Like, I don't know what I would have for, like, basic gear. I don't have rope. I don't have any range. Well, I, I, so I mean, let's, maybe, let's, let's, can you get those... Those ember fights that are like reaching for Aspen, can you like tie them up so, so that let's, Aspen let's floats away? Ju I just want to jump in here. The caravan resources represent items right. that you have uh, purchased and used. So you you can oh, have right. any number of things. If you want to use a caravan resource and say like, yeah, right. I have this okay. rope. Tight. Okay. You have that rope. Yeah, yeah that's just right. a D4. And we have to have the correct dice to do it. Is that right? It depends. It's it's it's. We have suggestions provided. I'm not going to give Got you it. a high level explosive for a D4, but like, we can work something out. Right. I, I think it's meant to kind of represent the relative value of the item, right? Got yeah. it. Re okay. Relative being the keyword. So yeah, um, do you want to do you want to try and tie these fuckers up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean. There are regular trees around. They're not all emberophytes. In fact, it looks like there's some regular trees here. Um, but try to anchor them. So I would have to attach a hook to it, like lasso the, the nearest one and try to anchor it to the to the shoreline. Because um, I'm not strong enough to hold it back. I don't know. Awkward traversal? So, so to be clear, you're trying to tr tie them up to an actual tree? I'm not how sure how great an idea that is. I'm going to try it because I don't have the strength to hold it. Okay, so well, I think that it's, if it's a test of strength, it's probably going to be hardiness. Um, and it sounds like you're adapting to your environment. So I would say uh, hardiness adaptation. That's the thing. I was trying to take my own strength out of the equation by anchoring them to like a shoreline yeah. tree. Oh, like a dexterity knot type thing. Oh. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, well, then tell you what. If that's the case. Um, Some say what? Some trickery. It sounds like skullduggery. Tell you what. I'll let you do skullduggery. Yeah. Go for it. Hey, what about a net? Do we have a net instead of a rope? Skullduggery. I guess a net would be more ropes. So that's a D6, right? That'd probably be a D6. Pieces. Yeah. We don't have any more D6s. Yes, you do. You have one at the bottom. Two. I thought I used that one, and it's just been there all along. But okay. No, no. I'll roll with it. I'm not gonna say no to a three D6. Uh, I'll roll two D6. Because I have a six. Okay. Plus five. Hey, one of those. That's a 15. Hey, oh. Explode. Yeah, roll that again. That's an 18. That's a lot 18. of explodes here. I'm liking this. 18. Yeah. The, the backside yeah. of the D4 is that it's often 2D4. Um, and which one are you pinning them to, just to be clear? Um, the the one nearer to me. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. So you make your way over here to the base of the tree. You tie this giant lasso and you throw it around the one furthest. Uh, away from you. It lands perfectly around their torso, kind of wrapping like so. And as you pull, it collides into the one closest to you. And both of them, uh, after a minute or so of doing, are momentarily tied to the tree. I'm not going to tell you how long that's going to be. But I'm going to say that that is the turn, unless you did have more. Um, I mean, sure. Like, what, what was that? Was that two points or? Um, I'm gonna say for an action like that, that's probably four. I I could see okay, that so action taking a minute. So I got nothing. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, all right. So it is now, uh, these guys' turn. Um, so let's go ahead and make a couple of rolls here. So four. 
So what's gonna happen is the one that got roped in with the other one who didn't have it tied around their body, they are actually gonna worm free and they are gonna make a beeline for you, Viaro. Um, next thing that's gonna happen, this guy is gonna make his way down here and he's going to have a go at Hank. Uh, Hank, what's your movement? Uh, six. Six, okay, no, it does not hit. Um, so that is not gonna work. Um, and this guy is going to make an attempt to hit the arrow. Uh, that is a nine. Uh, yeah. All right, what's your armor? movement of six. Movement of six, armor of seven. Okay, cool. So that is going to uh, notch down your armor by one. And you take four damage to your health. Um, as this yeah. thing protrudes a branch that hits directly across your torso. All right, I need this for you, bud. So what? Three health. <laughs> uh, actually, you get to, just as a point, you get to resist uh, oh. health node loss. Shit, he does. Yeah. Yeah, so that is, what. what is it, hardiness? Uh, is this like whenever you take damage, like when it comes to actual damage, there's like a roll to see if you actually, actually take damage? Yeah, Correct. exactly. Or how yeah. much damage you actually take. How much actually you take. Uh, it's like a feel no pain roll. Hmm. Uh, I, that's Warhammer, right? That's the one. That's nice. it. I got that reference, folks. <laughs> nice. Um, so it's a hardiness plus approach to resist health node loss. Um, so let me ask you this, Viaro, as this thing is coming down on you and you are bracing yourself, like, what's your, what's your main goal when you're doing this? Like, how are you, how would you define your approach to that? Which I know is a weird question. Is, um, but taking in as many, the actions going on around me as possible managing to get back to the caravan and neck then and Aspen. I don't know how you want to interpret that. I would interpret that probably as a holistics role. Um, you're taking in as much of your Hardiness surroundings holistic. as you can. Is holistics. Not tremendous. You can use a caravan. Ooh. Yep. We're going down, baby. We're going down. That's a five. Oh, snap. I don't know how damage works. Well, you they they rolled four damage. You resisted. Wait, so he resisted all of it? Uh, no, it's it's on you to set the DC of how much. Uh, TDD, oh, I thought the rather. DC was I thought the DC was the uh, weapon damage. Oh, yep, you are correct. Yeah, so he yep. rolled a one and he totally resisted everything. I have a four in holistics. All right. Well, take uh, those. Yeah, that's a note. Um, <laughs> I don't in know that case, about. I roll that up my little really sleeves and just start beating on every tree because <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm invincible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so with that, um, uh, Arasia has made his way down the stream to you, Nectar. Um, I am going to say that a couple of your action points are going to be taken up uh, by grabbing him. So let's have the you scoop. roll. Um, sounds like adaptation to me. Uh, what the skill? Probably traversal or even repair would make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I like traversal. You've done a lot of moving. Um, yeah. And this feels like a good fit for it. So yeah. All right. That's a three plus a four is a seven. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say that with nobody trying to interrupt you, you easily take up this barrel. Um, what are you All doing right. with it? 
So I scoop him, I scoop him up and I kind of like make sure he's not drowning. Although I don't even know if that's a problem for a tree, but uh, just kind of dunk it out a little bit. And I just kind of like put it on the back with, with Daisy. There's kind of room back there, I guess. Like you just kind of nestle it into a saddle area. And then, um, I mean, once it's my turn, I guess we're going to try to skedaddle back out of the river south here and try to hook back up with the caravan. Uh, point in case, it is a moderate TDD that they are supposed to be, not the weapons damage. Moderate being a yeah. 10 that they are supposed to clear. Oh, interesting. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. That's what I'm doing technicality. Yep. Viara, <laughs> take five points of damage. <laughs> in, in before the errata, yeah. Um, in before, it survived. You wanted a rules lawyer, and now you have him. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> Corey is bored and needs things to do. Um, oh. Are you not entertained? <laughs> oh. All right. Hey, which which way, which part of this path that is so snaky did we come in on versus like? Like where? Which direction is forward to the to the right? Um, yeah, if you're going over to the right of the map, then that is the direction you're moving in. You came from the bottom left. Okay. I guess it really depends from here. Are we back at the top of the turn? Is that what's going on? Well, we are. Yeah. No, it's your guys' faction turn again. And I used some of my action points just preemptively just to scoop up Aspen. Correct. Okay. Do I have any? Did uh, I use two, two or left. what? Okay. Um, so this is a discussion for the three of us then, but yeah, it feels like maybe if you guys, I mean, Hank, can you tell from there if there's like other trees all joining this fray or are those the only ones that are moving or how, like, is our caravan surrounded or what? I'm going to assume that unless like the DM is, is, you know, playing some really heavy stealth roles that all the Ember fights that are to be on the map currently are. Okay. Correct me I'm off there, Taylor. Why don't you make a deduction roll clockwork? I feel oh, like we're in a, a forest 10. of it's like yeah, a sleeping here. army. Do, do you want to take that the deduction? Uh... Actually, you know what? DC five. This would be easy to figure out. Gotcha. I think Elsewhere Goon, do you want me to do you want to take that or do you want me to take that? I think that's your question. I also slight bias. Hank is not good at deducing things. Oh, that's fair. I guess I was asking you because you're the one that's next to the caravan, so like can you yeah. s like you know what I'm saying? Like I just don't know if I I, I, mean, I, I can I can try to look around to see if any of the trees around me are, are animating. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's deduction clockwork you said, Taylor. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Do... Oh go ahead. I do have a D6 and deduction plus one and insight, so deduction yeah. is my middle name. I, I think deduction clockwork, and I'm going to take the 1D4 from the dice pool, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Well, 1D4 one plus one. Telescope. And then an additional 1D4 on top of that. Yeah, Hank beats it. Hell yeah. Did that explode um, too? Hank. He's going to get approved on his report card. Hank, Hank. Uh, these ember fights that you lot are fighting right this moment are uh, definitely the only ones that are currently in sight, but it, it does not escape you that you are in the realm of the Glade Folk, right? Um, there could absolutely be others in here, uh, and it will definitely be... Uh, something of a chore to uh, to get through the rest of the forest without attracting any attention. I will give you this, though. Um, these enemies don't seem to be particularly strong. Um, Interesting. You say yeah. that. Yeah. Um, They're very squishy. Yeah, they, they are pretty, they are pretty squishy. Now, you you know enough um, to know that Ember fights, like any other people on EVA, do have their own societies. The leader of these societies may well be stronger. If you attract their attention, that could become a problem. Um, oh. But as of right now, yeah, things look great. Um, it seems like we have a lot more trees to go with. So I, I think I feel like we should regroup with the caravan and do the whole torch thing that Adam came up with earlier and like sort of like build the perimeter and try to just go through this 
Um, I would like to interrogate the tree guy, though, and ask him if he knows why they want him so bad. Uh, yeah, no, so as you're loading him up onto Daisy's back, you ask him, and he says, Who even knows? Everybody wants a piece of me these days. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, okay, well, I, I, my, my tactical suggestion is like we try to like regroup like here if you can get the caravan going and if we can like start doing it but do we need to go like save Viaro? he's kind of like should be i know those you can get out of there okay probably the most in danger of the three of you Uh, it is worth pointing out this one here is still tied to a tree Um, okay so let me actually put a little thing on him um What do you guys think of that? You want to try to, like, yeah. Hank, do you want to try to, like, down. pull the caravan and then we and we can try to get the torches around? And I can start trying to get torches, like, as I arrive. I think that sounds like a good call. I'm having flashbacks to, like, old D&D campaigns I played against, like, or we're in an underdark place or in an underground place, and, like, the enemies around us are, like, light sensitive, and somebody's like, light right. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Hank, Hank, Hank can do just that. Hank will hitch himself to the wagon and doesn't even need to have someone dangling the ham in front of him this time to get him motivated. Um, <laughs> Hank's just so motivated to get moving and protect his compatriots, he's going to give that a try. Okay. Yeah, and I'm going to try to meet up with Hank and just start to... You know, I'm, I'm going to leave Aspen on Daisy and jump down once I get here and just sort of, like, take a torch out and start, like doing that one thing from like one of those movies where you try to keep people away with a torch like with the the flare like okay yeah um so yeah that will be uh definitely a caravan resource you can either decide to do it now and put the torch onto the caravan once it arrives um or you can wait till it gets there and i'll let you use a bigger one to kind of protect the entire caravan it's up to you i think i'll wait i think i'll wait Plus, I'm in the water. It seems like a bad place to fail a torch roll. Yeah, for sure. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, you're not going to have any uh, issues getting your way back up to the road. Uh, that is well within your movement. I'll let you hold that action until Hank makes a roll here. Viaro, let's actually start with you. What's your strategy for getting out of here? Um, they have like a hit and run thing. Um, you. Um, it says it'll cost for roll obfuscation slash appraisal on a success. Your weapon deals half damage, and you get an additional full movement. Um, that's, that would get me six, basically. My movement half. Actually, would get me more because I'd get three. I would be able to get away. So I need to roll this real quick. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go for it. Uh, appraisal's a d6, obfuscation with a plus 5. What's the TDV on a hit and run here? Uh, let's have a look. Um, so TDV... Um, which one are you hitting? Um, the one not tied up. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, because he's, he's most in my way. I'm gonna put that um, in a moderate yeah. difficulty. Fair enough. Um, yes. <laughs> it's really, really metagaming. It makes sense to hit that guy, get the additional movement, but it makes more sense than the attack. Um, but the idea being to get out in front of the caravan and see if there are any more Ember fights in the way because I'm heading this way. Got a brutal support action? <laughs> you know what? I'll give yeah. you that. Sure. D10. Do you want to use it now? Listen. We're using it now. Okay, cool. Um, Go ahead and make that roll with the so additional D10. That's D6. That's a Ooh, roll. snap. It's 10 right there with the D10. Unfortunately, that's the real one. But with the obfuscation plus we're at value. A, we're at a 16. <laughs> yeah, no, it's sick. Um, okay, cool. What's half of your weapon? It's only two damage. Two okay. Damage. Cool, cool. So you are going to. That would get me 
hit them for three. Um, you take them pretty far down. They are still alive, but I'm going to say narratively, this thing takes a swing at you that you sort of action roll through and as you're in mid somersault you bring this knife upward directly uh, through their leg and they sort of stumble over to the side levying themselves up against a tree um, as you make your way through uh, and then you said you wanted to scan for any other ember fights uh no well after I was up towards here I just don't want to uh, get bamboozled again. And oh, scan actually, is in action. That yeah, I would it would be in action because it'd be something you're rolling for, and a hit and run is four action points. Um, so actually, sorry, buddy, that is actually it for your turn, Hank. Oh, no, because I get I have my the movement that I normally have. Oh, correct. And I get yes. an additional full, full. I get an additional full full movement from hit and run, which allows me to get up to here. Is that like a double movement then? Like what's hit and run? Is that how that's written? Literally like you deal so half damage uh, and then you get another full movement. So I'd move like 19 squares or something like that. 18 uh, you squares. Roll 18 squares, yeah. Polar, we're going to need another map. <laughs> Not everyone's got nine movement notes. <laughs> you know, my you favorite. Base camp. My favorite <laughs> thing Later, about. Idiots. My favorite thing about Vault Peddlers is when Nectar's like, gotta go fast, and eats like a bunch of chili dogs. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, oh, he even has a Miles with him. His grandmother is <laughs> the first Miles <laughs> Um, Yeah, man, the Emerald Zone looks fucking weird right now. Uh... <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, so Nectar, I'm just going to move your icon down that way, if that's the case. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add to your turn? Me? Uh, sorry, not Nectar. Viaro. No, okay. I'm out of points. That's okay, all cool. my movement. Then Hank, it is your turn. So am I understanding this right, that Hank is going to be grabbing the caravan and then moving it? Yeah, we're yeah, going to consolidate. All right. Mm-hmm. So you have a free uh, movement to get down that way. Um, I'm going to give you... What's your movement, Hank? Hank's movement is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's where you're getting without a roll if you want to push it further. Um, mm -hmm. Like for a sprint, for example. Um, then that I'll have to make you roll for. Do you... Take taking uh, consensus from the crew here. Do you think it would be useful for Hank to sprint any further, or do you think we're at about where we need to be? I think I think our new tactical goal here, if it's the thing that we can like recalibrate, is like become a like configuration that can move forward safely for yeah. a long distance. So I don't feel like burning yourself down to run an extra ten feet like really gets us anywhere other than out of breath if we're not like using the time to like set up the perimeter and stuff i think that's totally fair um hank is gonna i guess chill on this okay. kind of like square himself up to like sort of like uh the harness over his shoulder so to just keep on carrying things steadily forward tight yeah, no, you guys, uh, Hank, you and the caravan meet up with uh, Nectar and Daisy. Daisy is there, like, sniffing at, like, the uh, harness that you use, like, to pull the thing. Like... And um, as you uh, are kind of waiting, um, Aspen, uh, she sort of shakes like a wet dog and, like, throws the barrel into the back of the cart. Uh, and you hear All Aspen right. just give a very... <laughs> Uh, like thud as it goes in. Uh, with that, it is now this faction's turn. And here's the thing about these guys. They can't move super great. Um, they can chase you a little bit, but not very much. Um, so what well, happens next, um, as they, as you're making more distance between them, is they start this low moan that starts as just a little rumble um, and turns into this 
high-pitched wailing. It's it's like a sound that almost you could lose it if you weren't listening for it, if you didn't know how the sound started. It's like the white noise that blends into the forest as you're walking through it. Um, and this ominous wail is broken by the sound of thud, 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 thud. It's off in the distance at the moment. Um, But that's going to be their turn. It sounds like we have some non-zero number of turns until a really big tree shows up. Right, so... It was right in the title. It's an ominous whale. Oh, are we... Hello? Oh, shit. Are we all frozen? We are. Oh, God. Okay, cool. Uh, Doesn't look like it's on my end. Hopefully Discord fixes this in just a minute. Sorry for everybody watching. Uh, We'll be back up here in just a minute. Uh, I'm going to take us into the waiting room. Uh, while we get this sorted out off screen. So thanks so much. We'll be right back. Maybe. Well, I mean, we if we're back through here and then go back through here again. Okay. So we didn't uh-huh. even get through the forest event for you. Think everything's gonna be cool on the other side of things? No, I'm just saying if I if I don't plan on dying, then <laughs> the future includes coming back to this forest. <laughs> all dying aside. Right. All dying, all dying aside. aside. <laughs> yeah. I like the business meeting at the Happy Hammers. <laughs> right. All right. Well, does someone other than the guys made out of wood want to hold the torch in the back here? Because I have a feeling this is... I just don't know what a critical failure looks like to a tree on a stick. This is fine. (laughs) We're going to find out. Or or maybe, I mean, I mean, like, Taylor, like, what is my, what is my, like, hold a torch ability? Like, is that like a thing I should really be, like, freaked out about? Or is this like, just like, yeah, I'm a tree, but it's like, I'm not like an idiot. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of that. Like, it's here's the thing: holding a torch for a human being, not a great idea, right? It's sure, fucking dangerous. Enough. If you fuck up, you're gonna hurt yourself. Uh, it's okay. maybe not as dangerous as it is for a tree, um, but no, oh, and you're, you're I, I, I don't wood. see ember fights as being quite that flammable. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, well, hopefully this this whole concept even works then, since that's what, exactly what we're trying to peek behind the kimono we don't have conditions yet so we don't have the burning condition right <laughs> yeah um well i guess my my plan here is to form some sort of barrier or like determine here as we push forward uh and you know hopefully I, I would like to observe and deduct and all that other stuff like whether or not it looks like this entire forest is coming online or whether or not we don't see anything yet other than like the thud 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 type situation Okay, Can I do gotcha. that? Yeah, um, let's go ahead and let's have you make a deduction. I'm going to say deduction holistics. Deduction holistics. Uh... Uh, TDV. I'm going to set it higher this time to give you more information. Uh, okay. Let's say TDV 14. That is like something I am never going to achieve, so I fail. Uh, you <laughs> can use a... Uh, you also can resource. get exploding critical dice, you know, yeah. you, and you can get there. Well, I rolled a two. I did not get there. Uh, I have a d6 plus four plus one for insight, uh, but that is not enough. So that's what I got. Okay. I don't want to use my dice. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to use it for that. I was hoping it would be. I mean, really, I'm just trying to tell: Are all the trees around us turning into enemies? I'll so. give you. I'll tell you what. Even on a failure, I'll give you this. They're not all enemies. 
Some of these are okay. just fucking trees, right? Some of them are just trees. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, I'll even go further to say in your immediate area, other than the ones you already know are ember fights, it's just trees. Okay, okay. Well then I'm I'm gonna move to here and I guess I need to use a dice for a torch, but these are all like really good dice. Well, so tell you what, you um, to make a barrier, that sounds like a bigger die type. Um, okay. So what what do you have in mind? Um I'm looking at my items. I guess I don't have anything too amazing. Um for, like this is something I'm thinking about that I could use the information for and maybe it'll help you decide what you want to do yeah um, where I don't have anywhere where I have the caravans information saved for something like the other obviously we're doing we're being very brutally supportive but how to, what are the other ones so we can get those other guys oh yeah I got you dog oh, yeah let me get you yeah so we do uh, have this you have here. you have empathetic command right yeah uh, you have myst, uh, mystical intel, uh -huh. mm. philosophical R and D. I mean, it's almost like you were trying. You generated some mystical intel there when you tried to see if the trees were alive. It oh. does feel a little bit like that. That does feel a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe that D four would help you out. Yeah, let's just immediately use my mystical intel D four that we poofed into existence and uh <laughs> and uh and i just i just i guess i'm just gonna do the whole like yeah jurassic park more of an aragorn nazgul situation i guess but uh sure. just trying to keep these trees from running straight into the into us from following us okay tight um so yeah have you can you roll that d4 for me if i could just stop looking at my vault peddlers thing did, did i do that or did somebody else do that all i can see is the oh of course yeah <laughs> i did that sorry all right okay i was like where's the x um all right i got a three i just <laughs> need that as an image or something i can download myself uh yeah, yeah, yeah no, I need to put that or on even just a handout yeah just make it a handout that would work yeah i think you can actually view it i just uh because I didn't view it, I, but I thought I had clicked that I wanted to see it, and then I thought I had made it come up, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so I rolled a three on the d4 uh, for the torch thing. I guess as far as a combat action goes, whoops, uh, that would be like a... It sounds like a threat, right? You're like holding it yeah, in front or like of you. A, or like a feint, like I'm kind of like thrusting it at him, like... Yeah, absolutely. You know, just kind of like jabbing it, so... That's a uh, obfuscation deduction. Yeah, obfuscation right. deduction, and um, we'll Sweet. have that. Uh, the D four is going to add to this roll, so plus three. Nice. Oh man. Hell yeah! Hell so, yeah! All right, so that's uh, that's in my wheelhouse with the D six. So I got uh, let's this is an eight plus the three, eleven. All right, sick. Um, yeah, no. Um, so just to make sure everybody understands. So um, this target's armor nodes are now lowered by uh, half for the next round. Um, so they nice. are very, very vulnerable um, if you do decide to attack them. Uh, in addition, because it is fire, um, they are gonna sort of back up uh, and give you that hex's worth of space. Uh, cool. All right, cool, cool. Um, and what are you guys doing now? So that's Nectar's turn. Viaro and Hank? Hank is probably keeping on keeping on with the wagon train, as it were. Okay. Cool. I think that's kind of like occupying most anything I'm doing, unless there's like an, a threat or a barrier in front of us and Hank has to like plow through it. Um, but I think I'm pretty much on wagon duty. Three, four, five, six. So six is going to get you here. Um, oh, definitely no, rethinking no, the uh, tactical yeah. implications of having to drag the caravan ourselves versus buying a horse. <laughs> um, are we just like mounting up then? Like, is that reasonable? Because if so, Hank can go full sprint. Like, that is true. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we could avoid this entire confrontation. Yeah. 
Yeah, Hank, roll a ferocity traversal. Um, and on this, um, you can take an additional two movements. Um, because you are pulling the cart um, with uh, all these people on it, I'm going to put the TDV at 12. Oh, all right. Um, um, yeah. And, and is our... I... Go ahead. A suggestion maybe to generate some caravan dice. Mm hmm. A empathetic command for some ham from inside as motivation. Right. <laughs> do, do, does uh, Miero still have action points? Oh, yeah, I haven't used any. Yeah, he hasn't I gone mean, yet. You can, you can also do something to try to make this easier for him. Yeah, so maybe I try to empathetically command for some ham on a stick to motivate Hank as I mount up into the, into the caravan. Right. Maybe, maybe you could actually give him some of the ham. And you know, I'm oh. like, you know, you have worked so Very hard today. Hank needs protein. Yeah. 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 Hank has to hit his macros. Hank's macros are pretty demanding, as you can imagine. Yeah. I'm trying to generate him a D6. A ham budget set aside for Hank, because I'm sure Hank's like daily caloric demands are just stupid. Right, so they yeah. they get to eat like three hams, like a character from like an 80s, you know, arcade game, fighting arcade game. He's right. Like, eating like a whole turkey. Yeah. 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 It's, it's only a only River a City Hamsome. Only in a game that Taylor and I have designed could the concept of a ham budget come up. Right. And... <laughs> So right. yeah, I, I, it sounds like you're gonna empathetically command Hank via some ham, or or the members of our uh, caravan to generate some ham for us to motivate. Hank. <laughs> okay, so empathetic <laughs> command. Tell you what, I'll, <laughs> don't I'll, ask I'll, where this ham came from. I'll work with this. It you wasn't here extra... ten minutes ago. <laughs> I'll work with this. You have an extra d6 on this roll. Um, nice. Jimmy's gone anyways. All right, so it's it's this 1d4 plus eight plus the d6. Correct. Oh, Ooh. and then that, that's an explode? It does, oh, it's yeah. it's explode. Yeah, all right. Um, Come on. All right, so and then like roll 1d6. Yep. So in the hell, you have 14. 14. 14, well, you cleared it, so that's good. Um, so shit, Hank gets to make two full movements with everything. Uh, Nectar and Viaro, are you jumping on the cart as Hank just fucking Fred Flintstones his way out of here? Yeah, I haven't used any of my action points, so if that's allowed, I'm... I really hope there's one of those, like, bap 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 that comes from... <laughs> yeah, both of you make an adaptation hardiness roll. Um, I'm gonna set the TDV for these at nine. Station heart is three and a four. Not my strong suit, so um is this gonna cost me any action points? Because yeah, I mean I'll just do it. I might I might succeed on an explosion. Uh a leap costs two action points typically. Okay. Um, so you could do it twice if you tried. Well, what's your movement? Five. Mine? Hanks? Yeah. Hanks is yeah. six. Six, okay, same as mine. Um, velocity traversal is not really any better. Actually, worse. So, adaptation and hardiness. All right, I might get there. I was a three. I rolled a six. Okay. And Elstragoon, you're jumping in as well, correct? We're get, this is about getting on the thing? I mean, Hank is about to move this cart 12 hexes. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I would like to be there when it's done. Although I don't, I mean, I can, I can catch can up. Like if I'm mostly about like, I think okay. I'm going to just follow on... I mean, I didn't, haven't used much of my move, right? Yeah, true. And you do because I was pretty much just there. And so I'm just gonna follow behind, like safely behind, so with the torch out, so that you know, so because I'm I'm really playing the the bulwark here, not like the escape. Gotcha. So um, I'm just gonna already... I'm just gonna go as many spaces as I can go. Okay. If I have any leftover um, 
All right. Uh, so oh, VRO. Wait, sorry, just using two. All right, uh, Viaro, you are not going to make that leap. I had set the TDB at nine. You rolled a six. It was two action points. Do you want to use your last two action points to try again? Um, how much does this bird cost for? Um, tide, tide cost one. No! Just use my action, uh, or not, not uh, my movement to get there. So I'm just going to try and keep up with Hank as best I can, but when I get to there, I'm going to try and remain hidden, um, which is a roll I can make for one action point. Okay, yeah, totally. Uh, go ahead and roll that obfuscation skullduggery. I just hide in the bushes. Um, obfuscation skullduggery, five, and a six. D6 plus five. Great, we got a seven. Okay. You said you got a seven, Viaro? Yeah. All right, tight. Um, so yeah, you make your way to the other side of the bridge. Uh, and I think what you do actually is you kind of duck underneath it um, to give yourself the best possible hiding spot. Um, and as you do, uh, Nectar, you are running after it, correct? Yeah, I should be right here by the time I have nine spaces used up this turn. Okay, tight. Um, so we're going to have your pursuers go after you. One, two, three. They are so slow. And I'm going to have huh. this guy. Damn, he is tied to that fucking tree, Viaro. Uh, <laughs> he will never get free. Get grafted, buddy. Right? People people are going to walk through that forest like years later and just find him like literally as a part of this tree. The tree um, just grew around the rope. <laughs> maybe he'll okay. form up with this tree and he'll become like a gigantic one. That's actually how the, uh, yeah, that's how the Glade King was formed. Uh, God, what have I done? They grafted him with a giant elm. <laughs> uh, okay, tight. Uh, now, Viaro, uh, I just do want to be clear. What are you doing? You're hiding? Yeah. Can you just give me any insight into why you're doing that? Um, Because just buying time till my next turn because I couldn't take the sprint action. I didn't have any faith in my ability to leap onto the caravan because the odds are really bad. Gotcha. So you're not like hunkering down or anything like that. You're just trying to like. Yeah, they, you're uh, more like in cover than you are like. Try and meet up at the caravan over here and take another crack at it. I don't know. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah. with that, um, you hear this thumping that gets louder and louder and louder, and. Uh, Viaro, from your position underneath the bridge, you look out over to the forests in the east, and you can see the tops of trees swaying and bending and breaking um, as this thumping gets louder and louder and louder. And finally, almost like this invisible titan, this thing brushes through. And uh, yeah, you're not going to believe this, guys, but it's a giant fucking tree. <laughs> it's oh, wow. Like, I know. Big tree. It's, it's fucking huge. <laughs> the size of this uh, token is amazing. Yeah, it's if this were a miniature, this would be your most expensive miniature. Right, or yeah. Or it would no. just be a shrub from the front lawn. One this the is two. the beauty of uh, VTTs, is I can make this literally mm -hmm. in like two seconds. Uh, of the idea <laughs> of you actually having like a little um, bonsai tree just on yeah. the table. Yep. <laughs> This is just, this is the, yeah, some sort of gardener's miniature collection that we're using for this combat. All right. Um, and that is going to be my turn. Those other Embro fights weren't like too stoked on trying to keep up, or did they already move? They're oh, they already small. moved. They're just really no, they're slow. slow. Yeah. He's not. Do we, do, we, do we have to go that way? Um, I don't know. From the, from the map, I vaguely remember, like, and on the road was advisable. Um, but well, the trees are coming to us at this point. True. True. I mean, 
to the alternative option. We just, need, some... to, we just need to get to the other side for the notes. Right. I'm just trying to see, can we come out over here, like, without crossing the river or something like that? I mean, this guy looks like he can just step over the river, so I don't think taking out the bridge is really, like, meaningful. So, you know, if we can't escape from him, then maybe he just wants the scientist. Right. Yeah. Then we wouldn't have to, then we could lie way easier that we, uh, we didn't help this guy escape. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. If we need to stay on the road, maybe this is going to be some sort of mega combat, or it's going to turn, like, diplomatic. Um, we still don't know why they try to take this guy. Um, if we don't, I don't need know to stay this on the road. from any of these other shrubs in this forest. The guy in the barrel can die for all I care. Look, right. I don't know these trees right. from Adam. Right. <laughs> Where I was going. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, I'm thinking that, that tree is the end of me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, just the sheer size of that lad. Absolute unit of a, of a walking perch. Um, <laughs> that's a conifer I don't want to fuck with. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> what do I do here? Um, uh, do, do we ford our oxen across the river? Um, I don't know, like, what, what, what's the route around this thing? Because, uh, or we could do some real goofy shit, like, if, does the tree have, like, ant legs? Like, two two tree legs? Can we go underneath the ant legs? Uh, yeah, you can yeah, definitely try know. and go under the ant legs, absolutely. Fucking at -AT. You know, alright, yeah, I like, I like Hank's... I got scared away. Hank's just like, I'm not stopping, I'll just run through them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's the issue, you have to put Ham in front of him, which is a problem, because he's just going to keep on going. <laughs> your, your, your asset has now been turned into a liability. <laughs> All right. We did forget about the issue there. He well, went, they say when life gives you ham, you got to make ham aid, so. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when life gives me ham. <laughs> <laughs> Swallow me the ham aid. <laughs> it's actually like the, the like, light pink ham water in the bag now. As, as yeah. Made. yeah. Drink it's it, the, we're it's poor! The hot dog stuff. Hot dog water. Um, uh, Your guys' plan yeah. is to try to run through them like under the under the legs? Are you going to try and stop Hank? Am I going to try to stop Hank? He's, he's, he's running. You're not gonna stop. No, him. I I don't think I've even got the distance to stop Hank. I think at this point, if he's if he's ham motivated, even if I like cut through this way, like best yeah. case scenario, I just keep up. Uh huh. Um, ham motivated. Um, <laughs> he's in HM mode, but like do uh, he's gonna stay on the path apparently. So it's either that or like like is this the end of the encounter if we just like run off the side into the Theoretically I mean, not animated forest. To be clear, I do not have a second forest map. So right. if you do decide to run off the screen, then it, it's going to it's gonna start getting theater, the theater of the mind, um, right. which is not inherently uh, bad. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's 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 really up to you guys. Um, this is this is how I GM. I throw stuff at you and I let you figure it out. Uh, these other trees didn't try to talk to us or anything, right? No. One of them no. says, oh, so, hey, wait a minute. No, no. No, and in fact, they okay. summoned this guy with a, with a moan. Right, yeah. So I don't think this is supposed to be a talky combat thing. Maybe we could just light a bunch of this forest on fire. Oh, like, God. Yeah, then we're going to summon the Lorax, and his challenge rating is way too damn high for us. <laughs> challenge rating of the Lorax? That funny. token is gigantic. Um, I just want to be very clear. Right, yeah, no, it's gigantic. The Lorax are all of us the Lorax. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the intended solution is here. Yeah, no, the, that, no, he literally just told you what happens. He gave us things to deal with. There's not really an intended solution. Yeah, I, I'm not presenting you with a solution. This is just you guys right. figure it out and do what you want. Yep. Yeah. 
I don't we feel can... like we can stay on the path because that thing's on the path. So we could juke him. You want to like he's, if he's slow enough, we could like go over here, and then when he comes that way, we could like double back. I caught an under like an offhand comment from Taylor. They're very slow. He's not though. Hmm. Well, not in comparison. <laughs> I actually just looked at his stats. He's not great, but yeah, but he I is very big. So believe in Hank. I'm just trying to reach Hank. My plan is to get onto the caravan because I know he's not stopping. Um, uh huh. You could say Hank is going ham. Yeah. 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 I think I think my action, at least for now, is to to come here and try to hook up with the caravan and then see if uh, see what this ember fight does after that. The gigantic one. And then Viaro? He didn't get as close, but I got my trusty rope to try and hook up to the caravan on, on yeah, the way by. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lasso. Nice. Hey man, if I can if I can somehow figure out a way to make it clockwork or obfuscation with skullduggery or something, that's, right. that's my real house. That's your plan, yeah. Uh maybe tougher cell. Some, maybe get like a skateboard out of those D12s down there on the bottom. Just <laughs> yeah. That's actually kind of what I was thinking. It was like if I, I'm a trash person, right? One of the things that I have on me is yeah. bullshit. like having oh, just a plank with wheels and managing to get the rope onto it and stitching from the back of this thing sounds kind of awesome. Hey, to yeah, be clear, just... if you don't do that, then like we're not friends anymore. Because <laughs> that's the, cause that's the dopest shit ever. Your cyberpunk game is literally named Skitcher and you haven't done it once. <laughs> <laughs> I just got the cool things implanted into my legs to do it, all right? It took a lot of money. God, what a loser. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> it all right, sick. I don't um, have a lot of humanity. <laughs> so let's go ahead and, uh, Nectar, I'm going to have you roll first. Um... So you are, if I'm correct, you're just leaping onto the caravan as it passes, right? Yeah, I'm just grabbing it. Like it's classic, like, you know, even Daisy's up front. So it's kind of like the horse I've gotten on a million times, like with a ride that you grab the horn and swing a leg over kind of thing. Absolutely. So let's have you make adaptation hardiness because you did so well on your earlier roll. I'm going to turn this into a really easy TDV for you. It's a four. Yeah, but what if I roll like garbage? Oh, ad adaptation is plus four, so I still get a. Five. I was gonna say then, then that that that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, sick. And then Viaro, you've got a little bit of a harder one here, so your goal is to latch onto the back of the caravan as it runs by and literally skitch on the back. Correct. Hey, if if Nectar wants to take my rope and latch it to uh, Daisy on, on his way, there. that would be a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Throw me the rope. Easier, maybe. Sure. All right. Yeah. No, I think that's fine then. Um. So let's have you. Um. Huh. Um. Let's have you do a clockwork. Clockwork repair. I got that too. I got that too. Yeah. And uh, because you're having nectar. Uh, tie it on for you. Um, I'll lower the TDV to that to let's make it a 10. Um, and you're also going to need to roll one of your caravan resources. It needs to be either the D, mm, D8 or D10. Go with the D8. Okay. So I'm going to remove that. So we'll roll a D6. Five. With my awkward, that actually gets me there. But we'll roll the D8. That's a 14. All right, sick. Hell yeah. Um, and then finally, Hank. I take it you're making another sprint action? Uh, you could say that, yeah. Um, which I'm... Is that... It's going to be ferocious. Um, traversal again? Yeah, ferocity traversal. Um, and because you have the uh, power of ham uh, guiding mm -hmm. you, I'm going to put the TDD for this at 10. 
Okay, yeah, also for context, Hank has switched up his 80s hair metal oeuvre. He's now screaming Fuck Like a Beast by Wasp. Um, <laughs> Uh, is he fun? Love it. Love that for you. Uh, right. So that's... All right. And we are, our, our caravan resources are, all right. So let's, what they are a, two, a D12 quickly. and a D10. I think we made it, folks. We made it. Hell yeah. All we right. We made it after all. So let me get everybody up where they need to be. It's me, Hambone, Hambone. It's me, Hambone. All right. We just need dice for ham. That's all. That's how this game works. It's broken. <laughs> we have one caravan market resource we can get. It's ham. Yeah. 30 and 30 sock puppets. D12 is like Black Forest. You know, D4 is like, you know, that, that luncheon stuff that's like mostly water. It's that, it's that Polish ham. That's, that's just right, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hank. <laughs> You, uh, <laughs> you, you have this ham dangling in front of you as you are cascading through uh, the branches and trees of this forest. Uh, you are like lightning running through this place. And as you do, as you come around this bend, you see Nectar there waiting for you, hand outstretched. And as you run by, you grab his hand and just hurl him onto Daisy, who catches you like a nice. feather on the fucking wind. And Nectar, as you are thrown over the caravan, you take the hook on the end of this rope and attach it to the top of the cart, leaving Viaro clear to grab the other end of the rope and just roll behind you all. Hank, um, for better or for worse, I'm giving you control of where this caravan goes. Uh, you have uh, 12 spaces to work with. Um, would you like Nine. me to move the uh, Glade King first, or would you like to move first? Uh, uh, I'm tempted to say, let's see what the Glade King does. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, for context, Hank is screaming, uh, I've got pictures of naked ladies. That line from uh, Wasps, Fuck Like a Beast, this is happening. Oh yeah, no, that 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 classic line from, from yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, dog, you got 12 spaces to go through. Tell me how you're using mm. them. Oh, what's it? You got 12 spaces oh, gotta... to go through. How are you using them? He's so big. He's so big and you're... you're... Yeah, boo -boo, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a small bean. Um, yeah. Uh, I think like then, and this this thing has like separate legs, right? There's it, like it does, passive... yeah. Can we like go under it? You could absolutely try. Uh, I guess. Oh. I still have that torch. I can just hold it up in the air just to get him to. I like that idea. Okay. We should definitely drop it behind us if we. This is ballsy. We might just get crushed by a giant tree. <laughs> right. Yeah. Specifically yeah. his groin, just crunch. So you're, you're holding oh, us the... the worst tea bag in history. Just the you're, biggest you're acorns the... you've ever seen. You're holding yeah. up crunch. You're holding up just the Just roasting on an open fire. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, so I, I think like we get a Hank, because Hank would probably just plow through. It's a question of like what auxiliary stuff the rest of y'all are doing um, as, as Hank ferociously pursues Ham. <laughs> I know uh, there's, like, there's like a part of me that wants to like maximize my action points and my movement and all that stuff, but I feel like like what's actually happening is I'm just holding on and like hoping that we make it. Like I think that's like thematically what's happening is it's just like kind of and a VR is doing his damnedest to adapt to the situation because he can right. tell that it's there's the chance that we're all fucked. Um, so he's right. trying to latch as many torches to the top of this card as he can. Um, 
I don't know how many you would have from inside the car, the caravan. I don't, we've never really talked about what's in it, but we have a blacksmith in there, so there's gotta be some shit. Um, adaptation repair, uh, and then we're gonna use the D10 to cover the outside of the cart in torches. That's gonna be how that works. Sounds cool to me. All right, go for it. Um, yeah, uh, because you're doing this in mid sprint, we're gonna set the TDV at 11. And okay, that, well, that thing's critical. exploding. So there's 10 right there. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Adaptation gets me to 13, but let's roll the D10. Hell yeah. yeah. All right, Hank. I've been weaponized. We're gonna have you make. We're gonna have you make a ferocity skullduggery roll. Excellent. Uh, and with the torches on the top, I'm gonna lower the TDV here to 13. Okay. Um, good old Hank is going to uh, definitely take one of the uh, take the last dice. Yeah. Um, if we're gonna go all out, if we're going to go ham, um, we might as well get out of here. Um, cool. So yeah, it, that's gonna be another uh, 1d4 plus eight plus additional 1d10. Um, should have go. gotten old, but it hasn't yet. All right, and then plus eight. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Eight, eight. <laughs> Hank, there is no forest. There is no road. There is no cart or harness pulling on your shoulders, digging into your skin. There is no giant sweeping his arms at you that you have to dodge in between. There is no rickety bridge bowing with tension for each step. No, Hank, there is only the ham. <laughs> only the singular chunk of ham dangling in front of you. And that's all you can remember for the next 30 minutes before <laughs> before Nectar grabs you by the shoulder and screams in your ear, we're already gone. He's already gone. <laughs> stop. 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 He's already dead. Stop. Stop. He's already dead. <laughs> Time for context. Hank is already psycho through half of that's what I call music. You know, 80s hair metal. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure, like, he's he's screaming the chorus to girls, girls, girls by Motley Crue at the top of his lung, probably disconcertingly loudly. Um, anyway. Keeps the predators away, you know? Probably um, does. And Hank, as uh, the rest of the crew brings you um, to ba uh, back to reality, um, you find that you are out of the forest. You have cleared your way through uh, the realm of the Glade Folk and out into open territory. And we will find out what happens there in the next episode of the Happy Hammers. Um, thank you all. a scientist. Thank you all so <laughs> yes, much right. uh, for joining in. Uh, for all of our playtesters, um, I keep putting you all on the spot every week, and I'm going to keep doing it because the shit that you do is cool and important, and I want you to tell me about it. Um, yay! Yay! Uh, tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you're up to. Um, cool. Um, the book on climate change is still uh, trying to find a publisher and an agent. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, and in the meanwhile, I'm putting together a report on climate change's impacts on global agriculture and food security. Um, sounds dry is actually incredibly terrifying, um, but I'm working on that and I'm going to probably be publishing that soon as well. All right. Wait. Uh, I'm you still working on the world of Emma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. A preview of how the, yeah, it's like, it's like the world building exercise for this. Game hey, we're, we're actually gonna, playing. The glittering courts, it's gonna be fun, guys. <laughs> Hell yes. They say right about what you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> uh, I'm still working on my role playing game on my uh, Twitch channel and otherwise, although I'm realizing I get way more done if I don't stream it, but that's a whole separate thing. Uh, I just got back from Origins, so now I have 
two new publishers duking it out, so it's going to turn into like the last episode of uh, The Bachelor at some point. They're both really <laughs> excited about it, but uh, right. that'll be cool. Um, and hopefully development will pick up again uh, by fall. So that's what's going on there. Excellent. I don't have anything near so ambitious. I just really like hanging out with these guys, and Corey has roped uh, me into every bit of tabletop he can, and I, <laughs> I like tabletops. Um, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Sweet. And we're happy you're here as well. Um, all right, well, that is it for tonight's stream. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. Tune in again next week, this time 7 p.m. Eastern Standard on this uh, channel, uh, and we find out what happens next to the Happy Hammers. Uh, say goodbye, Happy yeah. Hammers. It turns out the hammer is actually not that kind of hammer. It's a ham. <laughs> it's a ham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>